I'm Tom Romito from Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society. I'm sitting with Stephanie Spear, who is the founder and CEO of EcoWatch, the outlet for environmental news for the past 25 years. Now, we're here because on Tuesday, December 6th, at the Rocky River Nature Center, Stephanie is going to present a program to Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society a membership meeting. And she's chosen a topic called the Living a Biocentric Lifestyle and How to Get More People Connected to Nature. So, Stephanie, um, we're here because you want to explain to, the, to our listening audience why they should come to our meeting and hear what you're going to be telling them. So this is like a preview. And I'd like to ask you um, about what EcoWatch does. Now, I know that in your, in your promotion for this, you said that EcoWatch helps readers on their journey from a humanistic viewpoint to a biocentric one. And be, before we get into your actual presentation content, I, I would ask that you explain what those two concepts are, how they differ. Yeah, well, thanks, first of all, for inviting me to be a speaker. I'm very much looking forward to speaking um, on December 6th, and um, hope all of you will come. Because um, not only do I love to share some of my thoughts, but I love to listen to, um, to yours. So please come with lots of questions, and I really enjoy conversation. Um, so a journey from a humanistic viewpoint to a biocentric one. You know, I feel that the majority of people over the last many decades, you know, are, are born into a very humanistic viewpoint, meaning that human species is the top and we are who matters. And yes, there's all these other species that are nice to look at or know about, but that, you know, we're at the top. And um, that's just not reality. <laughs> reality is that all species are dependent on each other and that we must live in harmony with nature for long-term survival of all species. So, um, but it, it's, you know, nobody's fault per se, or, you know, maybe it's the way that we're educated, but, you know, I think that uh, my goal and hope is that most people have what I had at about the age of 19, which was an aha moment where I realized that the human species does not rule and that we have to be conscious of our impact on the earth and be aware of the health of other species for the long-term survival of humans, if, if nothing else. So my goal when I started publishing Environmental News back more than 25 years ago was to educate and motivate people to care about human health and the environment. And, um, you know, um, well, I was fortunate to have some incredible environmental studies classes as a college student. I learned about a biocentric lifestyle and Le Le um, Leopold and um, all of his ethics, his land ethic. And, I learned a lot about what it means to live a biocentric lifestyle where you take other species into account in your day-to-day -day life. So um, I call it a journey because there's no way that once you have that aha moment and become conscious of your impact on the earth that you can in one day's time implement all these sustainable practices into your life. It's a journey. Um, you know, I, I always encourage people to start with one item. Maybe it, that you bring re reusable bags to the grocery store. Like take one measurable item that you can say, well now I'm, I'm gonna stop using plastic bags and just use you know reusable ones. And you then realize that that one action actually makes a difference. And that's your journey. And once you implement that, then you're likely to say, hey, that worked. Why not try something else like composting? How about I don't you know throw away um, you know, any compostable waste and, you know, then you implement that and, and so on and so on. So I see it as a journey um, and I want to help as many people along that journey as, as I can. Well, Stephanie, what I understand then is that a humanistic viewpoint is um, those of us who are so wrapped up in consumerism that we're tied to our technological tools and advances and pay no attention to nature, whereas a biocentric lifestyle is being aware of the symbiotic relationship that we have with all other living things, 
the birds, the animals, the plants. Am I correct on that? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, and it goes down to the type of cleaning products you'd use in your home. So, or outside. I mean, if if we moved the camera a little over and you looked at my very beautiful brick um, walkway, you would see some weeds. And what I do is I hand pick them out because I won't spray I won't spray um, Roundup on my property. Um, I have as much of a toxic free environment here, um, which this is my property and you can see some of my trees and I'm, you know, feel very uh, happy about providing two acres of land that doesn't have pesticides and is kind of somewhat of a refuge for other species um, that are living in my community. So you just, um, you know, you become, you know, conscious and choose certain products or choose a certain way of life that is not only going to be healthy for you, but healthy for other species. Stephanie, uh, uh, the, the things that you've touched upon uh, just now seem to point toward uh, the sustainable lifestyle. The things that, that are going to help us uh, survive and thrive on this planet. Um, given that, you're going to be talking about how to connect people with nature when you talk to Western Cuyahoga Audubon on December the 6th. Can you, can you give me, without giving away the farm, can you, can you tell um, our listening audience uh, some of the low-hanging fruit for getting connected with nature that, that are beyond sustainable living? Yeah, I mean, clearly, I think all of your viewers know we are so fortunate to live in Northeast Ohio where we have the Emerald Necklace and so many other natural areas. I'm a huge believer in getting people outdoors, getting them on our waterways. I feel that in order to want to protect nature, you have to want to recreate in it. And by recreating in it, you realize the value that it brings to our lives and to the health of our planet. So, um, you know, it's really, you know, connecting to nature is definitely step one to wanting to care for the planet. The health of the planet. Thank you. So we've covered the concept of engaging people about um, living an ecocentric lifestyle. We've talked about um, things they can we can do to become sustainable. And then there's the issue of supporting strong environmental policy that's Part of your, your the, the third prong of, of your Eco Watch mission. Um, I think that um, in view of, of recent events, we we have a whole new slant on what to do and think about environmental policy. Uh, what can you say to us, our listening audience, as we lead up to your talk? Um, about where where we ought to focus, where should our minds be as we, as we move forward day by day? I will say that my talk will change a little bit since the results from the presidential election um, that came in in the wee hours of Wednesday morning. Um, but. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that the most important thing that individuals can do is educate others on what I consider the most important environmental issues of our time. That can be a local issue happening in your community. That could be a statewide issue. It can also be a, a national issue or a federal or a global one. Um, and we're, we're fortunate today to have um, social media and so many other outlets that allow us to communicate with others about the issues that we take to heart, that we're passionate about and care about, that will create a sustainable future for future generations. So in terms of what people, our audience, ought to know, think, and do, is to get educated about the policy issues and communicate them. Um, would, would you say that that is a good summary of, of uh, 
where we are right now leading up to our talk? On Absolutely, as well as engage. Engage, um, engage with um, organizations that you feel aligned with. Organizations that you know have the same mission and vision of what, what you believe in um, is critically important. And never so much as today will that be more vitally important as our present-elect plans to dismantle the EPA, renegotiate the Paris Agreement, um, bring on for his cabinet climate deniers. Um, you know, right now there's probably nothing more important than to communicate um, and educate yourself on the most important environmental issues impacting human health and the environment. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Educate, engage, and communicate as we move forward. Um, I look forward to uh, meeting with all of you on December the 6th when Stephanie comes to, to tell us more about this important issue. Thanks very much for watching.